Hi friends, I'm Amy and this is Ace Star Reads. Mom's here too. <laughs> Today we're going to try a chapter and a coffee. Yay! Yay! So last time I did this, what happened was we went to a new coffee shop we hadn't been to. Well, we had been to the coffee shop a long time ago before they switched ownership and stuff like that. And then we went to the coffee shop and then just kind of tried something new, got some food, enjoyed ourselves. And then I tried chapters of books that have been on my shelves for a very long time that I'm not sure I want to keep. And I would try the first chapter and if I decided I really wanted to continue on with that book, I would keep it. Or if I didn't, if I felt like, okay, this book could use a new home, then we would directly after coffee go to a little free library. Mm -hmm and drop the book off there. So if you haven't had a chance to see my first video, I will link it up here so that you can go check it out. That one, the theme was sci-fi. So that was kind of fun because I really like sci-fi, but I had some pretty old sci-fi that I was trying we out. We got rid of some. Yeah. And this time my theme is... Fantasy. <laughs> It's fantasy. So I really like fantasy. It's hard for me to throw away fantasy. Not throw away. I shouldn't say throw away. Rehome fantasy. Yes, rehome. That's a good word. But there are some that have been on my shelf that I just am not all that interested in or I've had them for a very long time or maybe I've started them and I wasn't sure about it or the reviews have been really poor. Like there's a lot of reasons why these particular books are ones that I want to try a chapter with and then either decide to keep them or rehome them. And I kind of thought this would be a fun way to help me get through some of the books on my shelves that I'm just not as excited about anymore. And maybe it'll get me excited about them again. Yeah. I don't know much about we these books. We don't even know we got them, but they just showed yeah. up in our library. So this one is Exiles, The Ruins of Embry by Melanie Ron. And that's volume one. There's two volumes in this particular series. I don't know where I got this one. Look how big it is. It's huge. Yeah. But you said it got fairly good reviews. It got really good reviews, but I haven't had a lot of luck with older fantasy. Like mm. fantasy from the 80s, 90s, I haven't had a ton of success with that. So for me, this is kind of like, mm, am I ever going to actually pick it up? Especially considering how big it is. I don't know. <laughs> Chunker. I don't know. Okay, next. Which is Steeped in Gold by CNN Smart. <sighs> so here's the thing. I have not heard one good review of this book. Not one. And it's a total bummer because it's such a pretty, it is a gorgeous pretty book. book. Yeah. And I got this from Alcrate. I was very excited about it because it's got Jamaican folklore, but I really have not heard anything positive about it. And it's because of the writing style is what I've heard. So I'm interested to try a chapter and see if I'm still going to give this one a try because there's definitely been books that people have not liked that yeah. I have liked. So yeah. we're going to try it. Okay. Next. The Woodwife by Terry Windling. And this is more magical realism, I think. And it's very folklore-ish. It's got good reviews. I just am not that excited to pick it up. I don't even know how we got this. Maybe my grandma got it. I don't know. It did get good reviews. I do tend to like magical realism. Who knows? But I just don't think I will pick it up otherwise. So it'll be good to try a chapter try and see. Chapter, yeah. Maybe it'll get me excited about actually picking it up at some point. Okay, last but not least. Last but not least. The Last Unicorn by Peter Beagle. I tried it during a readathon, so that may have been the problem, but I just could not get into it. I'm going to try a chapter and see if I really do want to read this one. It just was dense and confusing, and I just wasn't enjoying it at the time. It's been around for years. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a book that's been I around for I years. I think I read it years ago, and I think I liked it, but uh, yeah, I didn't, at that time I wasn't recording on Goodreads, so I don't know what I gave it. This one's probably the one I'm least excited about trying a chapter of, and it is one that I probably just should rehome because I wasn't excited when I originally picked it up and it, yeah, but it should be exciting. It it's got a unicorn on it, right? <laughs> so I'm going to give it a try today and we'll see how I feel about these four books. It's a coffee shop that I've been to recently. Mom's never been there yet. She's hoping for a coffee shop that feels very homey. We have some really nice coffee shops, but they don't feel like that. Like you want to just go and snuggle in. Cozy. And I know. think this one kind of does. Okay. So we're going to go check it out and we'll show you what we get and I'll read my chapters and then afterwards we'll talk about how they went. Okay.
so I finished the 10 pages that was the first chapter of Ruins of Ombre, and so far it's about this young boy named Colan that was four years old when a wind made him blow away in a sense. And because he was blown away by this wind, he wasn't there when his family got murdered by brigands. And he ended up wandering until he was found by this woman who took him in. However, she enslaved him and then sold him. He ends up getting purchased by a man named Scrawler, who is the person who inherits this place in the waste. And so he comes from a wealthy family in a sense, because obviously the waste is not it's called the waste for a reason. It's implied that he was kind of the destruction of his family. Like, I don't know if he killed them all, but they all died. And he's the last man standing in a sense. And he has a lot of ambitions. He wants to be wealthy. He wants to make something of himself. So he ends up doing, you know, not so great things and using what he can use of the land, which is actually turning the dirt into concrete. He can use the land for concrete. And he gets the favor of like the head counselor or lady that owns everything and he becomes a blood something they're called the blood colin has an aptitude for math and for music and what this guy scrawler wants is to be impressive so what he does is he turns colin into his musician so that colin can help him get a lot of prestige at this point i think i would enjoy this i'd at least like to read some more of it starting new books is really hard for me it takes me a little time to get into it but i feel because this somewhat reminds me of robin hobb not exactly, but in the style of fantasy, it reminds me of Robin Hobb. I think that I would enjoy this and would like to give it a try. I finished my section of Witches, Deeps, and Gold. It was only eight pages. And I'm not sure how I feel about this one. It was a little confusing. There were definitely elements to it that I thought I wasn't quite sure about. So let me tell you what it's about. So far, it's about this young woman. She is the emissary for this doyen of this kingdom or what have you on this little island. And there's a resistance that is being formed against this government that she's also a part of. She's playing two roles. She's the emissary for this doyen and she is part of this resistance. So the problem though, is that she's going to this meeting where the head of this resistance is trying to get her to change the mind of this doyen and change this event called the yielding where they make sacrifices of these different witches. Our main character thinks that they need to trust the doyen, that she's gonna make the right choices. And they're saying if she doesn't change the yielding by this time we are going to kill her and you better be prepared for that because then this person would be taking over the little bit of information we get at the very end though is that the doyen is actually her mother and they don't have a typical mother-daughter relationship or they never have it's more like this doyen has been her mentor all her life and preparing her to take over and then i can kind of see how people would not be crazy about her writing style I know that there are words in there that you don't necessarily know and that has to do with the Jamaican language I think and that's okay like I don't mind that I, but I do feel like there's a lot of really descriptive words and more complex descriptive words which is totally fine too but if your sentences are really completely centered around that they don't flow as well and I feel like I have a pretty good comprehension when it comes to reading but I had to read a lot of these sentences twice or three times to get where she was going which told me that the flow wasn't so great and her sentences were just i don't know they they didn't flow into each other very well if that makes sense i don't know i'm on the fence about this one i could see how it would be very interesting and you know they leave it a good little cliffhanger at the end of this chapter we know that her mother is the actual doyen but i'm not sure 
Oh, and I did go and look up the reviews and a lot of people said the pacing is really slow for this one. And for at least the first half of the book, it was very boring is what a lot of people said. Boring and the pacing was bad and a lot of people DNF'd it. Okay, so The Last Unicorn by Peter Beagle. I actually really enjoyed this this time around. It is very whimsical. There's definitely a lot of poetry involved in it. I think what had it feeling a little difficult the last time I tried to read it was that it does have a very poetic feel to it. And the story is not too in depth, at least at this point so far. And I think I was trying to read it at a time when, you know, it didn't have all the brain cells that <laughs> available to comprehend exactly what was going on and I think I was trying to rush through it. So I enjoyed the first chapter and it feels like it would just be a fun, whimsical read. So, so far, The Last Unicorn is about the last unicorn. <laughs> we start out in this beautiful wooded area where we're learning about this unicorn who is immortal. It's living its life for many, many years, hundreds and hundreds of years. Nothing's bothering it until these two men come to the forest and say, oh, this is a unicorn forest. And the other guy says, nah, 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 it's not. There's no such thing as unicorns, blah, blah, blah. And the other guy's like, no, I think there's just not any unicorns left except for this one. But this is definitely the home of a unicorn, just based on some of the things that they can tell. So when the unicorn hears this, even though they've liked living by themselves for hundreds and hundreds of years for all their life, they also realize that there could be something wrong. Like, why are they the only unicorn? They don't believe they could possibly be the only unicorn. So they're gonna go out in search of other unicorns. And so that's where we're at so far. And at the end of this chapter, this unicorn gets caught by someone who knows that it's a unicorn because a lot of other people can't see that it's a unicorn. They just see what they believe, which is a white horse. So then we've got The Woodwife by Terry Windling. And I, <sighs> The writing was good. I liked the writing. I thought that there were elements to it that I could find interesting. But what it felt like, the vibe I got from it, was very Santa Fe, artsy, kind of hippie. It doesn't feel like it's going to have too much of a story. I read a couple of the reviews, and a lot of people overall liked it. But you have to like that artsy. There's not too much of a plot. It's more just this vibe almost and some people were a little concerned about the cultural appropriation because even though there's never any mention of native american folklore or anything like that it pulls pretty heavily from that is what mm. i have seen people say i don't know how that's how true that is it may just be like a lot of the folklore of that area because it's in the desert i only read the prologue i did read a little bit more of what comes next i know that there's a woman named maggie and i think she's an artist and she's coming to learn from this guy named davis copper and davis copper at the very beginning in the prologue is dying or he has died oh. and there are different people being affected by his death in different ways like this one artist maybe who I don't know anything about the artist actually but this one artist he destroys all of his artwork and his wife finds him naked in the forest covered in paint because he'd painted himself and cut his cheek and he was crying and he said okay let's go home and then another guy was going out to the woods and he could just tell something had changed and then another part of it there was this young boy watching out the window and all these wolves had come from all over the mountains to come gather in one spot i guess because of davis copper's death so the beginning of this was just talking about how he died and all these things were happening because of his death wow i just i don't know i gotta think about this one because i can't tell if i'm really that interested i just don't know so we're gonna go find a little free library and when we get there i'll make the final decision oh, okay
for the decision. Do you want to read Woodwife at all? No. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of Woodwife and I'm gonna get rid of Witches Steep in Gold, but I'm gonna keep The Last Unicorn because I think that'll be a fun read at some point when I'm ready to read it. And I am interested in The Ruins of Umbrai just because I feel like there are elements to that that remind me of Robin Hobb and I've loved Robin Hobb. So I'm not saying it's like Robin Hobb, just saying that I think that I could enjoy it in the same way. What do you think? Yeah, I'd like to read it too, I think. Okay. Hi, books. <laughs> I just wasn't sure I'd be that interested in the content. So I think that was success. 
Two what? books kept, two books unhauled. And mom had to haul a book. <laughs> it's her book. It's going on her shelf, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, the Escape <laughs> Artist by Brad Mel Meltzer in Goodreads. It's got 3.71, so it's almost a 4. And the back sounds interesting. So, yeah, I got a new book. It's not Amy's, so she don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I did my unhauling for the day. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up, Mom. Oops, hi. <laughs> and subscribe so that you can see more videos like this because I will definitely be doing more Try a Chapter and Coffee. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you later. Bye.